It's almost impossible to picture America without the Mississippi River, that slow-moving artery pulsing through the heart of the continent. The climate crisis is also top of mind for many voters. The Mississippi River is at historically low levels, which could impact the food supply and our wallets. It's the river of giants, the lifeblood of 13 states, a mythic highway carrying history, commerce, and the secrets of soil. From the chilly grip of Minnesota, down to the hungry waves of the Gulf of Mexico, cities have risen and fallen on its banks. Industries depend on its flow. And some say you don't really know America until you've traced the river's bends at sunrise or listened to the hush of a summer midnight. Water out there, whispering. But the Mississippi, timeless as it seems, is stirring with an urgency unseen in living memory. In recent months, a chain of discoveries has sent shockwaves through the geological community. Satellite images hint at fractures where none were thought to exist. Sensors have captured subtle shifts deep beneath the riverbed, suggesting buried tensions reawakening after centuries of apparent calm. Persistent low water, thin ice, and unusual current patterns are overturning climate assumptions that once felt solid. The mighty river, exhausted, is running far lower than modern records remember, threatening to reach severe lows for the fourth consecutive year. A drought with the power to choke the artery that moves America's crops, energy, and people. What's happening beneath the Mississippi isn't just a matter of dwindling water. It's what's below the ground itself. Cracks and fractures in the riverbed, newly noted by geologists, have triggered deep concern. Teams of scientists from across the country are poring over seismic records and bathymetric scans, asking a question few had expected. Could the Mississippi River be changing not just its core, but the very ground rules that hold the nation's heart together. Chapter 1 The Fracture Unveiled Disaster rarely arrives as expected. It doesn't always declare itself in a flood, a drought, or a dramatic wall of water. Sometimes it slips in as a silent cut, deep beneath the river's muddy current, invisible to anyone standing on the bank. A signal appeared one morning. Remote sensors, part of a USGS research project, flagged an anomaly in the riverbed near Hickman, Kentucky. A line on a bathymetric scan stretching across the channel, then fading into silt. The team suspected technical error, but a satellite mapping pass confirmed it. A rift, tight and dark, running beneath the surface for several miles between the main channel and the busy barge moorings. Downriver, the anomaly appeared again. At Greenville, Mississippi, drone images revealed a web of shallow, geometric cracks. Nothing serious enough to disrupt river traffic, but below, sensors picked up changes in frequency, subtle hints of stone shifting where only mud should be. The longest rupture, tracked by ground-penetrating radar, ran over for nine miles, tracing the shadow of old, sleeping faults beneath the channel. Within days, emergency field teams swept in, dropping seismic geophones from anchored boats. Readings confirmed what some field geologists had feared. The ground is not behaving as expected, one technician said, watching waveforms ripple and spike. There's something moving beneath us. This wasn't just ordinary river erosion or the settling of silt and gravel. The scale and pattern of the splits suggested something more profound, a process that could pull the riverbed itself apart. Is the cradle of America's river close to breaking open? And if it does, what lies beneath, waiting to reshape the land above? Chapter two. Underneath the river of life, where silence breaks. Few remember or even know that beneath the Mississippi lies a complex tangle of ancient faults and buried fractures, geological scars that stretch back tens of millions of years. The Mississippi Valley is, in places, layered with silt, thick enough to bury whole histories and crisscrossed by structures that last shifted with the continent's slow drift. 
When early cracks appeared on scans, experts turned to seismic records for answers. 30 years of charts revealed subtle upticks in microquakes, slight shivers that rarely trouble the surface, but now clustered along the same deep faults followed by the new bed fractures. Overlapping layers of movement painted a picture of the North American plate, always in slow, restless motion. Field crews continued mapping beneath the surface. Sub-bottom sonar located narrow voids in the riverbed, places where sand and gravel had shifted, revealing vertical drops that grew by a meter or more in a single season. Even the US Army Corps of Engineers, long responsible for taming the river, admitted concern. This is unusual, a Corps geologist told local reporters, eyes on the scanned cross-section dotted with newly discovered fractures. We're used to erosion or a cut-off meander, these are different. For hydrologists and geologists, the meaning grew clearer. The fractures lined up with known sleeping faults, seismic zones largely quiet for generations, but never fully inactive. The river's behavior was changing, flows slipping unpredictably, currents swirling above the deepest cracks. Ground sensors in nearby towns even recorded faint, persistent pulses, micro-earthquakes, strong enough to rattle loose objects, noticed by attentive residents and researchers alike. Where cracks form, new challenges rise. The contest is now between the old bedrock and newer geological stresses, all playing out beneath the seemingly steady flow of the river's surface. Chapter 3 Red Alert – The Science of the Hidden Warning You might expect the first real warning to come in a roar, a failed levee, a toppled barge, a city in crisis. But disasters are often quieter. A pulse on a remote sensor, gas escaping from a fissure, subtle vibrations in the earth. Beneath the Mississippi, the warnings have become numerous and undismissible. Two years of relentless drought have pushed the river's water table below the zero reference point used for navigation. Ice that once covered the water in winter now melts weeks earlier and forms less reliably, leaving the channel exposed to additional stresses. The thinning water flow and earlier melts are part of a decades-long pattern, with some sections losing nearly a meter of height in a single season. One of the most significant new threats is what drought reveals when river levels are especially low. In one recent survey beneath St. Louis, sonar and sub-bottom imaging found a significant fracture, a gash in the continent, as one researcher put it, bigger and deeper than previously seen, with raw edges suggesting newly exposed fault or weak zones. In several areas, drones and remote sensors picked up slicks on the mud, possibly gas escaping from previously trapped pockets. Ground sensors along both banks of the river began to record micro seisms and unusual faint heat pulses, signs that something beneath the river was moving, adjusting, or opening. That's when the red alert came. For only the second time in recent memory, geologists declared a state of severe riverbed structural instability for the lower Mississippi. New sensors, seismic arrays, and round-the-clock monitoring were deployed across hundreds of miles, seeking more evidence, more clarity about what was unfolding beneath the river. Experts now speak of subtle warnings, evidence shown more in data than dramatic headlines. But the consensus is clear. A river on the edge of physical change and old rules about water, land and resilience are being challenged by what's happening beneath our feet. Chapter 4 The River's Weakening Veins – A Land Unbuilt the river's problem isn't just water. For generations, the Mississippi has carried not only liquid, but life itself. Silt and sediment, building up wetlands, coast, and fertile delta. That gradual nourishing deposit is what made the region's extraordinary marshes and the network of communities and habitats that depend on them. But the river no longer delivers the bounty it once did. New research confirms a sobering truth. Less than 10% of the Mississippi's sediment now reaches the Gulf. Dams, altered channels, and other man-made interventions seize much of the flow. But newly observed rifts and fractures may further disrupt the river's ability to move mud and silt to the delta. The result? The foundations of southern Louisiana's landscape are eroding away. The evidence is visible below New Orleans, in the shrinking marsh and coastlines. Fresh water that once fanned out across the delta now yields to salt water, drying fields, and changing habitats. Some towns, built on stable land not long ago, now face rising salt lakes or gradual disappearance beneath the shifting surface. The Army Corps of Engineers has begun new studies, 
measuring the changing chemistry and water impacts from past Christiane, east to Biloxi. The first time such a large-scale survey has documented the river's reach and weakening power. Their concern is as much about water quality as about physical collapse. How much longer can the river sustain what's built on its back? If its sediment flow stops, the coastline may unravel. The river's cracking bed threatens not just itself, but the land and life built on top of its past generosity. Chapter 5 The Human Web – Infrastructure at the Breaking Point For centuries, the Mississippi has been America's open highway, the artery along which grain, oil, and raw materials flow. Barges float past battered levees, city-sized loads drifting from the Midwest to the Gulf. Bridges, St. Louis, Memphis, Vicksburg, and more, stretch across, designed for river movements above, not ground movements below. But the fractures now mapped in the riverbed threaten infrastructure in ways not previously imagined. Engineers evaluating bridges and docks are finding new, worrying signs. In one case, supports near Baton Rouge showed fractures at the meeting of concrete and silt, attributed instead to the shifting ground beneath. At Memphis, sonar detected an unexpected gap below major cargo terminal pilings, a void grown wide enough for survey pings to disappear into silence. Elsewhere, drones document abrupt drop-offs along levee approaches, once stable but now clearly in flux. Even smaller towns like Cairo, Illinois and Helena, Arkansas are requesting new structural assessments. Levees and floodgates designed to withstand force from above now confront a slow erosion from below as water snakes along fractures, undermining their structure from the inside out. The stakes are not limited to delays or local repairs. If a single vital bridge gives way or a levee collapses thanks to hidden cracks, entire communities could face isolation or disaster. And with water levels at persistent lows, shipping and agriculture are already feeling the stress with real potential for lost crops, stranded cargo, and disrupted commodity markets. The risk is becoming clearer as the physical support beneath the river gives way. The economic and social systems built on the assumption of stability must adapt quickly or face consequences that could ripple across the nation. Chapter 6 Racing the change, the moment the river decides. The Mississippi has always been restless, wandering over millennia in slow, meandering shifts. But now, the combination of geological change and persistent drought is raising the odds of faster, larger decisions, possible abrupt changes in course. Researchers at the National Hydrologic Lab have used the latest data on riverbed fractures to build new models. They found scenarios in which the widening cracks could influence the river to divert into new channels, most notably bypassing New Orleans by taking the Atchafalaya Basin, a long-feared scenario known as Atchafalaya Capture. Such a change would reroute the main flow, strand current ports, and disrupt entire sections of the coastline and gulf-facing industries. Commodity trade would be thrown into chaos. Barges designed for the Mississippi's recognized course would be left behind, and billion-dollar infrastructure could be rendered obsolete. Cities from New Orleans to Baton Rouge could be fundamentally changed overnight, a transformation driven not by hurricanes or surface floods, but by changes deep in the bed beneath the river itself. Such a shift has not yet happened, but the plausibility of a rapid change, driven by omnipresent cracks below, has never been taken more seriously. Chapter 7 Warning from the deep, the pulse no one saw As the story of Mississippi's bed changes has moved from science journals to headline news, some of the most striking discoveries have come from monitoring efforts intended simply to listen to the river, to hear what's taking place beneath. A new array of seismic monitors spread across key stretches of the river has detected a repeating pattern. Every few hours, a low, rolling vibration emanates from beneath the channel. These pulses do not correspond to known flood or current cycles. While not felt as earthquakes, the vibrations are strong enough to be measured by sensitive equipment and, at times, have coincided with reports of household items rattling in riverside towns, or with unusual acoustic behavior noted by river pilots. Scientists describe these as pressure waves, a possible byproduct of the riverbed flexing in response to gravity drought, or internal adjustments along ancient faults. 
To date, the vibrations haven't produced visible damage, but the combination of new data and local reports has focused fresh attention on the river's hidden warnings. There's a growing recognition that the river is signaling stress, not in the form of catastrophe, but as a slow, rhythmic alarm. Chapter 8 Beneath the Surface in the Shadow of Catastrophe we often measure disaster by the suddenness of a flood, the collapse of a bridge, the drama of headlines. But the greater danger along the Mississippi may be the slow, compounding effect of small breaks, cracks in the riverbed, shrinkage of the delta, low water, lost sediment, and quietly growing vulnerability. Conservationists have noticed too, the Mississippi has now been named the nation's most endangered river for 2025. Not from a single spectacular threat, but from the accumulation of problems, warnings, and worries discovered by scientists and local communities alike. Cities along the river are launching emergency drills, adapting treatment infrastructure, and bracing for scenarios that seemed impossible only a few years ago. Commodity traders and agricultural planners, businesses that depend on river transit, have started to hedge their bets, concerned about persistent drought and the risk of new disruptions to shipping. And the Army Corps of Engineers, local agencies, and state governments are reassessing the basis for everything from water rights to disaster evacuation strategies. The risk is more than just economic or environmental. It's a challenge to the notion of permanence, to the idea that the river's course and power are unchanging. The disaster isn't a wall of water, it's a thousand accumulating cracks and weaknesses, any one of which could pull apart the threads holding together the heart of the continent. Are we witnessing the unraveling of the Mississippi, or the arrival of a transformation that could remake the river for the generations ahead? Chapter 9 Waiting for the next move, the watch begins. If the Mississippi's fate is now in question, then we are at the beginning of a new watch. Scientists, conservationists, and river-connected families know this. The rules have changed. Old certainties, high water in spring, thick winter ice, dependable black soil in the delta, have been rewritten by cracks and fractures no previous floodplain map predicted. The future depends not just on long-term studies, but on real-time science. Data streaming from sonar, seismic, and bathymetric sensors, mapping surveys under the Corps' direction, and new research collaborations across state and federal boundaries. Every dawn, survey ships idle in muddy water, instruments running, trying to map the river's next move. Communities up and down the river are testing emergency responses, not just for flood or drought, but for ground collapse, sudden subsidence, or the abrupt opening of new river channels. The real question hovering over every riverside field, every bridge, every riverboat captain and city civic planner, is this. When the next crack appears, do we try to force the river to stay, trying to mend every wound? Or do we face the possibility of change, of adaptation to a river that is never simply tamed, never finally settled? The Mississippi story is not finished. It may still heal itself, taming or filling new fractures, stitching new land from ancient mud. Or it may split anew, confirming that the heart of America is, and always has been, a living, moving, shifting thing. So, as the next signals arrive and the watch continues, the story of the Mississippi continues to unfold, a reminder that beneath the quiet surface, history and geology are still writing their next chapter. And somewhere, tonight, beneath the restless current and the soft darkness, something older than any city stirs, waiting and watching.